Hi friends, Scott from Real Estate Japan here. Thanks for tuning in to another video. Today, I'm going to kind of go over some example share houses that you can find in Tokyo. Share houses are a great resource for students, young professionals, and those who aren't really quite sure how long they're going to live in Japan. If you don't want to commit to a two year apartment contract or don't want to deal with buying and selling your own furniture and appliances, share houses provide a very good opportunity for living in Japan without having to deal with those things. I lived in a share house for about a year and a half when I first moved to Tokyo because I fell into that camp. I didn't know how long I was going to stay in Japan. I didn't want to deal with key money and a deposit and buying furniture and all of that. So I thought a share house made a lot of sense for me and it worked out for me and I had a good time, but I know you're really kind of just rolling the dice on how well you get along with your neighbors and the kind of community vibe the share house has. I just want to get this info out there to anybody who's interested in alternative housing options when living in Japan. Share houses can be largely divided into two broad categories. On one hand, you can find share houses that are kind of dormitory style where you'll have upwards of 100 people living in the same building and there's large communal kitchen lounge areas. And on the other hand, you can find smaller share houses, which are more like a regular single family house that have been adapted for about maybe 10 people or so. Once we take a look through some of these share houses, you'll have a better idea of what I'm trying to say. And just as a quick reminder on how to navigate through share houses on our website, you'll want to get to the rental listings and then look under the building type drop down menu and click guest house. And this will filter down and narrow the search to just share houses and guest houses. Let's get onto the good stuff. Up first is this share house in Bunkyo Ward, Tokyo, which is pretty centrally located. So this is probably good for getting around plenty of different areas of Tokyo. And we can see that it's a dormitory style share house. So lots of rooms, big complex, um, open social gathering areas. So this kind of share house really helps you build a strong social network when you're living in Japan. Moving here from another country and not knowing anybody can be a little bit intimidating. So share houses like these are just nice places to have these areas where it's easy to meet new people and maybe join some groups or clubs. And since this is for students only, something like this could be an option for a student looking for an opportunity to meet a lot of people uh, while they're attending university. And here's another example of a dormitory style share house. It has a few similarities, but also a few differences between the previous share house that we looked at. I would say the biggest difference is that this share house was built in 1959. So it's the original structure is much older and normally that would be kind of setting off red flags in my brain. But the agent managing this property has said that it's fully renovated in 2017. So the interior is pretty clean and modern, but this also helps keep the monthly rental price in a more affordable range, especially for students. The one thing that I can't really find on the listing, so this is something that I would ask the agent if I was more interested in this share house, is for more pictures of lounge areas or kitchen areas if they have any. I'm not quite sure what to expect in that regard. One last thing to mention about this share house is its location close to Mejiro Station and also Ikebukuro Station, which is one of the major transportation hubs in Tokyo. And around it, you'll find tons of restaurants, shops, shopping malls, and then it has a wide variety of subways and train lines that pass through it. So getting around Tokyo from this location should be pretty, pretty easy. And this is another example of a dormitory style share house. I just kind of quickly want to bring it up because it's located in Saitama City, Saitama Prefecture, which is just north of Tokyo. Uh, so this is outside Tokyo city limits, but it still would provide a nice livable area for getting into Tokyo for any commute. So this is 
an example of really exploring housing options, looking outside of Tokyo, looking outside of uh, individual apartments, and you can really take advantage of all the livable features at a place like this and still be pretty close to Tokyo. So I'm going to go over a few of the things that popped out to me when I was looking at the listing. First, it seems to be pretty affordable for a modern, newer kind of share house. Um, there's this nice, bright, communal dining slash lounge area. And then the kitchen seems pretty spacious, which would be great for anybody who likes to cook at home. And the location is nine minutes to Nakaudawa Station, which is on the Saikyo line, which can get you to Ikebukuro, Akabane, and Shinjuku, but the Saikyo line is pretty notorious for being one of the most packed lines during rush hour. So depending on when you have to use the train, this may or may not work out to your favor. It's probably one of the hardest things to kind of grasp when you're doing a, an apartment hunt in Tokyo, but really understanding the station that you're next to and the lines it connects with puts you so far ahead of understanding what it would be like to live in that apartment. And moving forward, we're going to take a look at some share houses that aren't the dormitory style, huge complex share houses uh, that are more of a just standard family home that multiple people can share. So this share house is located in Kawasaki City, Kanagawa, so just south of Tokyo, and it's more of a standard home, just judging by the interior. And this kind of reminds me of the share house that I lived in, but I lived in West Tokyo. But this share house seems to have a few features that are better suited for multiple individuals living under the same roof. Um, one being this double sink setup. The share house I lived in had one sink, one bathroom for 10 people. Something I can talk about in another video. And share house rooms tend to be kind of small, but this room seems to be pretty spacious. This seems to be a good amount of room in your private room. And there's also this roof balcony, it looks like. I can't tell if this is going to have a table and chairs up here or if they're going to use this as a space for drying clothes, but it's a nice feature to have regardless, whatever they choose to use it for. The last share house that I have to mention in this video is also similar to the previous one, more of just a regular home turned into a share house. And there's a few features in this share house that I didn't see in some others, and that's what I want to point out. First is that it looks like there is a dryer in this share house. And while it is uncommon to have a dryer in most single family homes and apartments, because of the nature of this share house, I doubt there's any good place to hang your clothes to dry. So that's probably why they opted for this dryer. And I don't think the other share houses went into this, but it looks like at this share house, you have the option to do a room share as well. And if you're looking to stretch your budget in Japan, this is a really good option. And if we just take a look at the layout here, we can see that there's two toilets. There's a uh, the shower and bath here, uh, just a shower on the second floor, but that's still having multiple showers and multiple baths is great. Just going back to my own personal experience, when you have 10 people all waking up at the same time to use a shower or bathroom, things can get chaotic. So just make sure when you're looking through share houses, you know how many showers and toilets and how many people are going to be living under the same roof. And as far as which type of share house, the dormitory style or family home style is better, I don't think one is necessarily better than the other. They just have their pros and cons. Okay, folks, that's going to do it for me and this look at share houses around Tokyo. It's not a comprehensive look, but I hope it sheds some light on alternative housing options for when you're looking to live in Japan. Uh, additionally, there's a link down below that links to an article that we have on homestays in Japan. 
I don't have the experience with that, so I didn't want to talk about it, but there's tons of info there on how to find a homestay to live with a family while you're living in Japan. Thanks again for tuning in and watching. Take care. I'll see you guys in the next one.